you don't think about these things so here i am i'm here to help you pay attention and you might want to write this down nobody told me about the fourth trimester hey friends welcome back to my channel it's becky if you're new here i have pregnancy motherhood and just everything in general lifestyle content on my channel today's video is going to be extremely helpful for you if you're a first-time mom especially but if you're also wanting to be more prepared for having your second third or fourth baby first i'm gonna go over some of the obvious things some things that you see and hear almost everywhere some of them you might might not even be too obvious for you but there are definitely things that you really should be doing i'm 25 weeks along right now but i'm gonna start getting these things done ahead of time even around 30 weeks maybe some of them even sooner just to be prepared you can never be too prepared you never know what is gonna happen you don't know if your baby's gonna come early you don't know if you're gonna be put on bed rest like i was for my second pregnancy you just never know right before we jump in i'm gonna ask you if you are an experienced mom comment below any other tips and tricks that you may have for any first-time moms or any moms looking for information and for help write any resources tips tricks advice down below in the comments let's make this uh, an environment where moms can come to learn and feel safe so it's good to know and have these resources to be better prepared for you for your baby for your family so let's get right into the more obvious advice and tips that i can give first you. first and foremost i'm gonna give you the best advice to make a checklist sit down and do a complete brain dump of everything you want to get done in your house do everything you want to get done for it for you for your hair for your nails do everything that um write everything that you want to get down a ch complete checklist and be very in detail write everything you want to put in your hospital bag everything you want to put in your hospital bag for you and your husband what you're going to want for baby what you're going to want done in your house what you're going to want your pantry to look like i'll get more into that later but write a full checklist because and i say this not only for you so that you know what you're going to want to put and what to put and when you're packing you don't always like think of everything when it's in your mind it never comes out right write it down I, i'm telling you from experience i write things i write everything down now because especially with pregnancy brain you're gonna forget half of the things and it's just not gonna go well you also never know if something is gonna happen and you need your husband or your partner your mom your dad you don't know who you're gonna need to help you pack and complete that checklist so you want to have it as in detailed as possible just in case that you have somebody else completing the checklist for you my second obvious tip is going to be just pack your hospital bag ahead of time pack your baby's bag just pack general things that you know that you don't have to wait last minute to pack because those last weeks yes they take long in general but things tend to happen very very quickly i walked into my second daughter's 39 week appointment and right then and there they sent me straight to the hospital if i would not have had my diaper bag packed I wouldn't have had a diaper bag in the hospital so pack your bag pack your husband's bag pack your your baby's bag pack just things that you know you're gonna need a toothpaste uh an extra little toothpaste an extra toothbrush pack some toiletries pack an outfit or two for each of you pack for the baby just general items that you're not gonna be using from now until when you give birth so that it makes it so much easier on you when you have such a big belly and when you have so many other things going on like us moms do also think about your birth plan what are you gonna do if you're a mom that already has other children where are they gonna go who are they gonna be with what are they gonna need pack their bags pack their snacks if you can ahead of time pack everything have it ready in a corner with some toys just so that when it's go time you don't have to think about it in that moment if your water breaks you can just say okay their bag is right there in a corner of their room all that i need to do is grab it get it in the car and go my next tip that i didn't do with either of them was keep the car with a full tank of gas when you're closer to your last weeks of pregnancy i say past 35 weeks don't let your car go below half a tank of gas at least for me i live an hour and a half away from the hospital that i'm gonna be giving birth at so needless to say i learned the hard way 
I drove myself to the hospital with my first daughter having contractions. So I will, I, I, I'm like a complete believer in this. Have a full tank of gas. Just have it ready, ready to go. One thing less that you're going to have to do in that moment because we all know when it rains, it pours. And if you are in the car giving birth and in labor, you're not going to want to stop for gas. And it's just one more thing that you're going to have to do that you could have already avoided. Okay, this is something that you can do very simple, very easily. It takes five minutes when you're around around where I am. I have to do this. When you're around 25 weeks or before 30 weeks at least, register for your hospital. Get all your information there and going because you don't want to be in a labor having to write all this information, registering for the hospital when you can just have it said and done way ahead of time. It's one of the first things to get done on a checklist. So make sure that you definitely get that done. Okay, you are going to want to stock up your house. Once you start getting into the third trimester, go to Costco, go to BJ's, go to Sam's Club, go to places where you can get huge quantity things, get paper towels, get napkins, get all of the soap that you use, everything that you use daily. Just stock up on things that you can stock up on early on so that it's a lot easier during those newborn days. You don't know what it's gonna look like. With my second daughter, I was not able to go anywhere for a very long time. She had horrible reflux. Also, get your house cleaned. You're gonna be nesting. Go ahead and do it. Clean your whole entire house. Baseboards, air, uh, the filters of the air. Get by AC filters. Do everything that you have to do ahead of time. You're really not gonna wanna have to think about cleaning your whole house while you have a newborn, while you're losing sleep with your newborn and with your other children or if you like, just it's so much going on. It's one thing less to worry about when you clean your house or just have somebody come and clean it for you. I have seen prices that are very low, very affordable. You can just get it all done. Don't even worry about it. Make sure that everything is clean because at the end of the day, you're bringing a newborn home. You don't want your house to be dirty. You don't want to have to be cleaning with the newborn and your hands are going to get dirty. So just make sure you do that ahead of time. Okay, so for my first daughter, we didn't do this and I don't know why we didn't do this, but we did not put our car seat base in the car ahead of time so my husband we we're waiting for my husband to figure it out and to get it all ready to get the whole car like car seat ready before we could leave and he didn't know what he was doing he didn't know anything about any of it so a nurse had to go down there with him and help him but do that definitely definitely do that Get your car seat installed. If it's a convertible car seat, get it installed. Learn how to use it. Learn how to tilt it. Learn how to do everything. Get the mirror installed. A baby safe mirror, of course. <laughs> don't, don't get a mirror that's going to be falling on your baby. But get everything installed. Learn how to use it. Get a teddy bear. Practice with a teddy bear. Look at the manuals. Look at what every little thing is for. Because it's going to be so much easier for you when you're not trying to figure out how to loosen or tighten the straps with a baby in there and it's just easy pick up and go once your baby's already born born okay another very very obvious thing that you're gonna want to do is choose a pediatrician for your baby ahead of time because you're gonna have to go to the doctors to the pediatrician to get a checkup a couple days after birth and you don't want to just be sitting there at home losing sleep you're gonna be tired it's just it's oh a thing of life you're gonna be tired you don't want to be sitting there losing even more sleep like trying to figure out what doctor to go to trying to find an appointment have your doctor ready to go choose a doctor get call them get everything squared away when your baby's born you can give them a call or I think your nurse can give them a call and schedule an appointment for you so it's so much easier you don't even have to worry about it clear your phone storage this is a huge tip Ahead of time, clear your phone storage, get Google Photos, get it on iCloud, get it wherever you put your photos, get everything out of your phone so you can take all of the pictures, all of the videos, and not have to worry about emptying out other pictures that you might want to keep on your phone. So just empty everything out of your phone, make sure your phone is ready to go, charged up, get an extra charger, put it in your hospital bag, and just be ready. You're going to want to wash everything. Wash your pump parts if you're pumping. Wash your baby bottles. Wash the bibs. I mean, the the passies. Wash the passy clips. Wash all the clothes, all the mittens. Everything. Have everything clean with a clean and clear, fresh 
detergent you don't want to use any harsh chemicals there's baby detergents but there's also clear and free so just learn about it get informed and clean everything another good tip is to clean what you're going to be wearing in the hospital and what you're going to be wearing to go home with the same detergent just because your baby is going to be on you so you don't want the baby to get an allergic reaction to any of the harsh chemicals in other detergents okay last very obvious tip is going to be prepare your diaper caddy um, either in your nursery or on your bedside nursery just get it prepared so when you don't when you get home you don't have to put extra like onesies or diapers or wipes just get everything prepared in your diaper caddy ready to go when you get home with your baby that's already one thing that is out of the way done you don't have to worry about it it makes everything so much easier i did it with my second one and that was something it was just like a weight lifted off my shoulders when i got home and i could just sit and enjoy her and have everything was ready okay so now we're getting into the good juicy stuff this these are tips and pieces of advice that i really wish somebody would have given to me or i wish that i would have watched somebody tell me just like i'm telling you right now these things that you're gonna want to get prepared for little pieces of advice that will very much help you for your mental health your health and the baby's health when you get home these things um you don't think about them especially as a first time mom you're so focused on giving birth and your baby being here and the cute little outfits and the baby's name that you don't think about these things so here i am i'm here to help you pay attention and you might want to write this down because it's super important to do these things okay everybody tells you that when you get home your baby is going to sleep and sleep and sleep but from from me i didn't know this was my first or my second with my once you have your first you kind of start learning trial and error but learn the baby's sleep needs there's a class that you can take it's not sleep training it's nothing like that it's just learning about the needs of your baby how much they need to sleep how long they need to sleep how often they need to sleep do you need to wake them up from sleeping to feed them learn about baby sleep needs what your baby needs to for development what your baby needs to thrive as a newborn it's gonna help you especially in those first couple of weeks and those first days coming home from the hospital so learn your sleep your baby's sleep needs learn it read it look it up you don't have to take a class if you don't want to but just get informed look at all the articles online get informed another good tip is researching baby cues so again this happened with me with my first baby sometimes your baby's gonna cry and you're not gonna know what your baby's crying about researching baby cues might be able to help you and walk you through what your baby wants what your baby needs what your baby is crying for just like adults babies have body language and there's certain things that they do when they're hungry there's certain things that they do when they need a diaper change certain things they do when they are colicky just research baby cues learn them and it'll make your life very much easier with me i didn't know anything about that learn baby cues so you can learn what your baby is telling you what your baby needs so that everything can go so much smoother for you and your baby also something that's very helpful i didn't use this with any of my babies and i really wish i would have because i was completely disorganized and i didn't know exactly how helpful this was and so i really looked into it and it was already too late for my second but download baby helpful apps um there's a, a million of apps there's like a million apps for um baby sleep help it just tells you 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 just write everything on your phone you log it when you when you feed the baby when you you know breastfeed how long how long they're sleeping for and it'll help it'll learn your baby's schedule and it'll help you realize what it is that your baby needs what they when their sleep regressions are coming because that's a whole nother ball game i have to do like a whole other video on that because Sleep regressions will slap you in the face and you will not know what hit you. Those apps tell you when there's a sleep regression coming, when there's a growth spurt, when there's a leap coming. So sometimes your baby is not going to be drinking milk. Sometimes they're going to want more than you've ever seen them drink before. And then they're just going to stop. These apps will help you. They are there for you. It takes a little bit of discipline to just 
as soon as something is happening, they're pooping, they're peeing, write it into the app, log it in, download the app before you give birth, play with the different apps. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ones. Download a bunch of them, play with them, see which one you like best, see which one you, it just works better with you and plan on using it. I plan on using it with this baby because it's very helpful. It's another thing, one thing less to worry about, to stress about, to think about, to time in your mind. I remember with my second, I was t trying to time everything along with another toddler's schedule and I was, it was a lot, especially with postpartum. Which brings me to my next tip. Prepare for the fourth trimester. Nobody, nobody told me about the fourth trimester. Again, I was focused on giving birth, having my baby, learning how to feed her, spending time with her, but nobody told me about the fourth trimester, the first three months after you give birth. That is by far the hardest trimester and nobody ever talks about it. And I really wish that somebody was here, like I'm trying to tell you, I wish that there were, I had somebody to tell me about the fourth trimester. Fourth trimester, your body is going through very extreme changes to go back into pre-baby form so your body's gonna be in a lot of pain you aren't gonna fit into your pre-pregnancy clothes but your pregnancy clothes are gonna fit too big so prepare to buy a couple outfits loungewear yoga pants t-shirts some comfortable postpartum clothes that you're gonna be able to wear if you plan on breastfeeding get the breastfeeding tanks get get the comfortable underwears because you're gonna be bleeding a lot and it's gonna hurt but those underwears those granny panties they're your best friends they're so comfortable the hospital does provide you with like a mesh underwear but they're not the most they're not comfy they're not the best they do help but when you get home you're gonna want to feel more comfy and more you know in your element so prepare a drawer in your in your closet or in your room or anywhere for just a simple postpartum wardrobe, just get a couple loungewears, get your underwears, get some comfy socks, get some things that you're going to feel comfortable in to be lounging around, feeding baby, getting to know your newborn, and transitioning into this new phase of life. You're also going to want to get a postpartum basket, just like a diaper caddy for your room. You're going to want a postpartum caddy in your bathroom. I'll have another video post it soon about everything that you should have in a diaper caddy but it becomes very helpful when you plan ahead you have it stocked up so that when you get home you're not looking for everything the boxes aren't everywhere you don't you're not in a rush you can just have it ready and have it there ready for you to use ready for your ease ready to help you because it's not easy if you do plan to breastfeed be prepared Learn about how often your baby should be feeding, how often you should pump, how much they should be feeding. Get yourself informed, get yourself prepared. If your baby is born with a tongue and lip tie, if they're born and you have latching issues, and in the case of any of those things happening, you know different techniques to use. You don't have to wait for the lactation consultant. You don't have to supplement right then and there with a bottle. You can help yourself and help your baby without anybody trying to intervene. Obviously, they're there to help, but it's better when you're informed and you know exactly what you're walking into because things happen. My first latched instantly. She was born and went straight to the boob. My second, I needed help. I didn't know how to latch her. She, It just wasn't working naturally. So, get yourself informed. Even if you don't plan on breastfeeding, sometimes you give birth and this motherly instinct occurs and you want to breastfeed so in that case you are already informed if that happens to you also if you do plan on breastfeeding do your research on formula i know you plan on breastfeeding i planned on breastfeeding with both of them but i had formula back like a uh, prepared just in case do your research on what formula you would give your baby what ingredients you want them to have what ingredients you don't want them to have what brands are good what brands are not good just in the case of anything happening, any emergency for you, for baby, or if they're not latching, your milk doesn't come in, you know what formula to give your baby. You know what to answer the doctor when they ask you, what formula do you want to give them? They're hungry. In that moment, you're not going to want to just blurt out any answer because not all formulas are the same. 
not all of them have the same ingredients and you're not going to want to tell the doctor right then and there wait hold on and go frantically looking on your phone to find what formula you're going to choose for your baby no plan ahead learn about formulas and choose the one that you would feed for your baby and also as an experienced reflux mom plan ahead for your baby to have reflux and what formula you would use in the case of reflux just because that's something that i went through and i was the one frantically searching for formulas while my baby was hungry you don't want to be that mom get your breast pump out of the box clean everything learn how to use it prepare a breast pump caddy um i'm saying caddy for everything but it's the best way when you have everything clean on one little area maybe next to where you're gonna have your changing table next to your bed something that is very simple for you to just get it in your reach and plop it right on to your breast pump and plop it right on your boob and go you're not gonna want to be walking around your whole house trying to find different breast pump parts and do all of that while you're leaking while your baby's crying you're not gonna want to do that just have a breast feeding station next to you have a big jug of water and you'll be good I hope you guys enjoyed my video I hope I helped quite a few of you out I wish that there was somebody that would have told me all of these things and that's why I'm offering it to you because this information is very very much very much needed especially for me I wish I would have had it but if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already comment below for other moms looking for information looking for advice looking for tips let's make this a place where we can help each other but thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one